Hello and welcome to the Mom Interviews brought to you by LifetimeMothers.com. My name is Kristen Hewitt and each week I chat with everyday moms like you and me. And today I'm so excited to introduce our guest. Her name is Sharon Langert. She's a 40-something mother of five and believe it or not, she's a grandmother and wait till you see her because she doesn't look like a grandmother. Um, she likes to find the balance between practical and beautiful along with loving and caring for her family. Sharon's a stylist, a designer, a volunteer event planner and a kidney donor and she vlogs at fashionisha.com. Sharon, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for all those kind words. Well, it is pretty amazing, everything you do, so I have to start off with, uh, how do you have time for everything you do? Well, I, I really believe in finding the balance, like, like you said, between being you know, a great mom and also taking care of yourself. So it's kind of like, uh, I, I feel like if you can do things for yourself, you can give to others, you know, and you can, you're ha just in general, a happier person. So I, I try to be like, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm so crazy, overwhelmed, and busy, but I try to keep a calendar and just think about like every day, making the best day that I can and doing things that are exciting and fun, but also mean, you know, meaningful. Um, so let's first start with the, the story behind Fashionisha. What prompted you to start it and tell everybody a little bit about what, what it is you write about? Okay, well, basically, uh, since I'm 16 years old, I love fashion. I wanted to go into the fashion world, either to become a designer or an editor of a magazine. And I got married young, and I moved out to suburbia, and uh, I had five kids. Wow. So <laughs> I got pretty busy pretty fast, and I, I'm a you know, my main job is a stay-at-home mom, and that was the most important thing to me. But as somebody who's creative and who loves fashion, I always try to do things that would satisfy that inner creativity inside me. And uh, so I tried to, you know, I did a lot of volunteer work. I got involved in my kids' school. And I actually, you know, when they got a little bit older, I actually did design my own line of clothing, but it was only one season. And then I had a little extra time. My oldest daughter had moved away. And I would, you know, the internet was going crazy with blogs. And I said, you know what, I'm going to start a blog. And I Googled how to do it. I didn't know anything about it. Like most women, my, you know, a lot of women my age, they're like, oh, I don't do, you know, I don't do in the internet. I don't do Facebook. You know? and That's I'm like, crazy. I know. And as my kids were like getting involved in that, I was like saying, I'm going to keep up with that. And I taught myself everything. And I started this blog because I love fashion, but I also love inspiring women. And I felt like there was like a blank place in the market for something that wasn't completely shallow and was all about beautiful things and just, you know, a combination of like women in taking care of themselves and self-respect and fashion and modesty. So I, I kind of pulled all my passions together and created my blog. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about modesty because your blog is a little bit different. How does faith inspire your style and what you write about on the blog? Well, actually, um, that was something that I struggled with as an Orthodox Jewish woman who loves fashion and style, it was, it's not so much that I'm zealous about modesty. It's something that I'm challenged with. And I know there are a lot of women in my circumstances that have a hard time with it. You know, there's just certain things that we can't wear or that we, ha we have challenges in the way we style our clothes to, you know, keep with our faith. So I, that was a big, you know, drive behind the blog was that I wanted to show that you can look beautiful, you can keep up with fashion and you can still, you know, stick with your traditions so it was like kind of inspiring myself, you know, to be stronger in my faith. Because a lot of times I was just like, this is too hard. And I was turned off by it. So as I inspired myself, I inspired other women as well. Well, and there's a lot of people that might not even be the same faith as you, but they don't want to dress as provocatively as some women dress. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Everybody has their own style. So for women that do want to dress a little more modestly, I'm going to kind of throw you a curveball here, but what are some of your favorite pieces or favorite favorite things that every woman should have in their closet if they want to dress a little more modestly? Well, um, before I tell you the pieces, I just want to say that when I created my blog, I didn't want it to be specifically for Jewish women. I wanted it to touch all women because there are women out in the workforce who need to dress, you know, for the office. And there are women, you know, in other faiths that like to dress more modestly. And it's just, you know, it's about self-respect and looking, you know, really looking beautiful and not just like showing off body parts. So I felt like it could touch everybody out there. Um, and I, as going back to the pieces, I think the pencil skirt is like amazing. I have a whole closet full of pencil skirts and that's a piece that every woman should have and every can, woman. Can I ask you about the pencil skirt? Can a pencil skirt work on any body type? Do you have, because when you think of a pencil skirt, you think of straight, thin body types. Can anyone wear a pencil skirt? 
I've seen pencil skirts on every body type, and I think they can look great. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a bandage pencil skirt. It could be a structured one. It could be, you know, if as long as, the, you know, everybody should have a good tailor and have it made for their body. But I think it can be worn on every single body type. That's very interesting. You know, if the pen... The length is really important as well. Like when it comes right to the knee, it's super flattering, super modest, and super sophisticated. And that was an interesting point you just brought up about a tailor because I know when I go shopping, I have a little bit wider bottom but small top. So I always get my dresses altered, but not everybody uses a tailor. Yeah, no, everyone should have a tailor. And, you know, that means you're going to spend a little extra money on your clothes, but it's worth it. It makes one little nip here and, you know, some it can make all the difference in the way you look. Okay, so pencil skirt is one. Give us two more pieces you think that every woman should have in their closet, every mom. A button-down white crisp blouse is such a great piece, not only to wear by itself, but as a layering piece. I mean, there are so many tops out there that, you know, you would look in the store and say, this is not modest. You know, the neckline is plunging or the sleeves are too short or whatever it is. And you put that on top of a white blouse and you have a whole new look. And I've seen celebrities doing that. I've seen celebrities wearing the white button-down blouse under a strapless dress. And they're not Jewish and they're not, you know, they're not doing it for modesty reasons. They're doing it for style. So that's, it's just a really unique way to style outfits. So the white button down shirt is really important. And I also just did an Instagram post how, you know, the chambray shirt, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, chambray? Chambray, yeah. And, um, yeah, chambray. Uh, that's, you know, the new white button down shirt. That's also a piece that's so versatile and you can wear it with anything. So that's a great that's a great piece also for spring. No, those are some great tips. All right, let's talk about your inspiration. Where do you find inspiration for your post and your fashion? I like my inspiration. I like my post to be very organic and to come from my my soul. So it's not like I'm not very regimented or organized about my posts. I kind of just get inspired from everything and anything. Um, I could look outside one day and just the sky can inspire me, and the colors of a sunset can inspire me, or I can run into a friend and see an outfit and that is so cool. That's so original. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a theme, you know, sometimes I'll do a post on just color combinations, which I love doing because I also love interior design and, um, you know, party planning and all of those things. So color scheming is a really, really fun way to do posts because I think it's just like, you can go into your closet and create new outfits and shop your own closet. If you get creative and think outside the box, uh, get in inspired by, um, you know, like watching street style. That's one of my best ways to get inspired, you know, and I'll look at something that I might not be able to wear, but I'll be able to, you know, learn something or take a component from it and kind of apply it to something that I have already. What's your top color for spring? What's hot right now? Well, you know, it's funny because, uh, last year, the color of the year was radiant orchid or is that what it is? And I, it's kind of coming back to me now, even though it was last year's color, I kind of love the lavenders and the periwinkle. I love it on your nails. Yeah, that's that's what I'm feeling now. I feel like it's a happy color and it's a creative color. All right, let's talk a little bit more about you because you've done something pretty uh, spectacular. You donated a kidney to someone you didn't even know. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience and what prompted you to do that? Yeah, that was just like such a random thing that happened. I I mean, I do love volunteering and I do feel like we, we need to make a difference in the world. And every, every small action we do can change, literally change the world. Like if you smile at somebody, you can make them, you know, give them, make them feel good and they'll have a better day. And then they'll smile at somebody else and it just spreads like waves. So I'm all into that positive energy. But what happened was um, I was on Facebook and I noticed a friend of mine, she made a group, she created a group because she had kidney disease and she wrote something about how if more people understood, you know, how terrible it was to be on dialysis, then maybe some people would consider donating more, maybe more people would consider donating a kidney. And that statement kind of shocked me. I was like, that's a lot to ask from somebody. Isn't that dangerous? Isn't that, you know, you give a part of your, your body. That's, that's like, how could she just say that? If she's just saying that maybe it's not such a big deal. Maybe it's something that we can do. And I was like, you know what? I want to find out more about this because this is maybe something that I would, I would consider doing. So I contacted her and she told me that she already had a kidney donor lined up but I should, you know, um, you know, call this organization that helps people with kidney donations. And I called them and just, I didn't even know what I was getting myself into, but they tested me. And throughout the next six to nine months, they found a match with another young mother, which to me, it just resonated so much, like a mother who was about to go on dialysis. And I was like, I just felt in my soul, like, this is something that I'm supposed to be doing. And we went for the testing and everything matched perfectly. And before I knew it, I was scheduled for surgery. So it was kind of like an out of 
I did. I didn't overthink it. I, I, it was a very spir- spiritual journey, actually. Well, life takes you where you're supposed to go, right? Yeah, I felt like I was being guided there. And, you know, I did a lot of research and I learned that um, for the most part, kidney donors actually live longer than the average because they, you have to be in optimum health. You have to, you're screened for everything and you have to be in optimum health to donate a kidney. So, um, and also that we only need one kidney to survive. You know, if, if a person loses one kidney, this, the other kidney compensates and that's all a person needs and their health will be exactly the same, if not better. And the only thing that a kidney donor has to watch is, you know, for things like diabetes, she should take care of her health and, you know, take care, you know, watch her weight and make sure she eats healthy. And if those things are fine, then there should be no issues. And since I donated, you know, since the time that I donated a kidney, I've run a half a marathon and done a bike a Wow. I kind of like keep loving challenges. And when I don't have a challenge in my life, I'm like, what next? So um, do you ever sleep? <laughs> yeah, I actually sleep a lot. I need a lot of sleep. <gasps> like about being in my 40s is I feel like I get tired faster. Well, I have to touch on one more thing before we get to um, the gift we have for you. But um, I think it's very interesting that you're already a grandmother because you, you look like you could be a new mother. So I wanted to ask you, um, just uh, moving from that role to mother to grandmother, what has been the biggest challenge for you um, becoming a grandmother or has there been no challenge with it? Well, it's you know, it's the most wonderful thing in the world to be a grandmother. But I have to say, I'm going to be super honest because that's what I do. I'm very honest and I like to, you know, relate to other women. It's really hard being the older generation. Like when I'm hanging out with my daughter and her baby and she's like the young mother, even though I get compliments and they're, everyone's like, you look great. It's kind of like you have to mourn the loss of being that young mother and you have to take on that role of being the grandmother. And there's just certain you know, things I can't, there's a certain way that I can't act anymore because I have to act my age. I mean, that's just what it is. So it's, it's just accepting your age and embracing it and doing it with grace. And I think that's really what keeps you young. I think that if you try to run away from where you are in life, you're not making yourself look any younger. But if you embrace it and you're happy with it, then you keep your youth. So you have to basically be where you are, is what you're saying. Just be where you are. All right. I want you to give us. Um, I want you to help any woman out there that's watching this, that's about to become a grandmother for the first time. This is a huge life transition. You've been through it. What is the one thing? Is there a book that you read, or is there anything that you did that kind of helped you prepare yourself to become a grandmother? Um, I haven't really read anything or prepared myself at all. I just was full of joy and I embraced it. And my daughter wanted me to be there in the room with her when she had the baby, and I was oh. there. And- I kind of just went with it and the emotions drive you like it's just so amazing and so beautiful to watch your own baby have a baby. Uh, The one thing that I found hard was that I was like feeling, you know, like that postpartum, everything that I felt when I had a baby, the the fear, the anxiety, maybe that I won't be able to, you know, take care of this new baby. I kind of like felt it for my daughter. You did. That's interesting. I was a little, I had a little like anxiety for her because, you know, you want her to be happy. You want her to be okay. Uh, so that was, that was a little challenging, but with the second, you know, she just had another baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. So with the second baby, I kind of like said to myself, she'll be fine. You know, you just be there to help her be supportive. And it's kind of instinctual, you know, you just want your, it's your child and you want to help your child. But at the same time, you have this like little baby that you love. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. All right. I lied. I have one more question. So when you're holding your grandchild in your arms, how does it feel? Do you have the same love for your grandchild that you have for your own children or is it a different feeling? It's, it's incredible. It is the same love. It is. It's just an incredible, it's almost like a miracle because I personally am not like the type that runs over to every baby I see, you know, I'm not like, Oh my God, I love babies. Let me hold your baby. I'm not that (laughs) type at all. You know? Uh, so it is. It's you pick up that baby and you're just like, oh, it's like your own child. But like they say, you can give the baby back, <laughs> and you don't have to do the night feedings. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I remember being a young mother, and the hardest thing for me was like not being able to sleep, like being exhausted all the time. I loved being a mother. It was just like that for me is was my most rewarding, and it's still my most rewarding job. But the exhaustion was very overwhelming to me. So. Being a grandmother is just perfect. You know, you get to have all the benefits, but you get to say goodnight. I'm going to sleep. (laughs) Sharon, I feel like I'd talk to you for two more hours, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. We have come to the part of the show where LifetimeMothers.com has sent you something a little bit special to thank you for being a guest. Did you receive it? Yes, Yes, I I did. did. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, it's an early uh, Mother's Day gift for you. Oh, how pretty. Okay, well, go ahead and open it. 
Thank you so much. I, I hear you're getting the Sarvoski leather wrap bracelet, and I absolutely can't wait to see this piece because I saw it on the website and it looked gorgeous. And I love wrap bracelets. I know they're very on trend right now. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun getting presents. Isn't it? Yeah. It comes in this little pouch. Oh, how cute. Lifetime mothers. Oh, this is so fun. I love the pouch. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. Look at that. Colors. And I love color. Everyone who knows me knows that I love color. So what birthstones do you have in the bracelet? Um, I see there's Ruby, which is my birthday. Um, it's also my girls. I have... I don't know. The, I have uh, three girls who were born in July, and it's funny because I have five children. My boys were one of them was born in January, one was born in May, and my three and my three girls were born in July, and I was born in July. So, so did all you have all in the family are, are either Ruby or what's the next one? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna have to learn my birthstones. So do you just have your kids' birthstones on there, or your grandchildren's birthstones as well? I think I just did my kids. Aww. I have also the the green. I don't know what stone that is. Is that aquamarine or yeah, something like that? Oh, it's so beautiful. Let me see. Hold up your wrist. I really like that. And you're right; those are on point and they are trendy. And I it's a little edgy, which I like also. I like you know, I like things that are beautiful and I like things that are a little out of the box, a little edgy. Yeah, and I think any mom would love that for Mother's Day. I actually want one of those, so I need to get one. I love that. Oh, beautiful. All right. Well, thank you, Sharon, for um, spending so much time with us today. It was lovely meeting you. It was so great talking to you as well. And to our fabulous audience, before we let you go, we have a question for you. Would you ever donate an organ to a loved one or perhaps a stranger like Sharon did? Weigh in on the LifetimeMothers.com Facebook page. And don't forget, Mother's Day is coming up on May 10th, so if you need a special gift for your special mom log on to lifetimemothers.com and order your personalized jewelry and if you'd like to be a guest on the mom interviews please email our producer at mominterviews.com thanks so much for watching the mom interviews for lifetimemothers.com i'm kristen hewitt see you next time